so uh, so look my next question to you is there are people who ask me this question multiple times saying that how many hours of sleep is ne- needed for the body because there is a lot of risk scientific um, if you see there are so many people who say that you should have 8 hours of sleep so they complain saying that uh, I- i'm taking on i'm on medication but still i am having only maybe like 4 hours of sleep or 6 hours of sleep so what's your take on this yeah i know for years and years everyone's like 8 hours sleep 8 hours sleep by the way someone made that shit up as well now they may have had some scientific studies most of those statistics were made up as well to skew yes. what they want to do to answer your question there is no ideal amount of sleep an example of this let i, I i'm training every day a couple of hours in mixed martial arts in the gym um, my, my body might require a bit more than the average person. The average person doesn't train every day. So, so, so maybe it needs eight hours, maybe it needs nine, maybe it needs ten. However, we look at somebody like Vince McMahon, who runs World Wrestling Entertainment, Dana White, who runs the UFC. They're notoriously known for surviving for like 20, 30, 40 years as running these multi-billion dollar companies on less than four hours of sleep every night and working at the highest possible level. Vince McMahon is 77. <clears throat> He's got a physique that puts most younger men to shame. He's notorious. He thinks sleep is the enemy. The very fact that he has to sleep, he doesn't like it because he should have his time running the business even more. So it's however much that you need. So don't buy into this dogma that you should have eight hours sleep. I've got this thing called a, a Cura ring, right? This ring right here. And it monitors my sleep. It monitors a lot of my biology that's going on. So it says how many times I woke up in the night, how long I was awake, how much time I was in bed, of that time in bed, how much was I in REM sleep, how much was I in deep sleep, how much was in... It's all really useful data. However, everyone's different. Like sometimes I have had a 15-minute nap. Literally, it's like, and I woke up and I felt refreshed. Sometimes I've been in bed for 10 hours. I woke up and I've been stiff as hell. It's taken like an old car in the winter and needs a bunch of oil to start getting it going. So always, all I say is this, listen to your body, not my body, not someone's opinion, although it can be useful and it can be like a signpost to help you navigate around this thing called sleep and insomnia. But listen to your body. Oftentimes I'd wake up in the morning and I'd still feel tired. And I'd be like, I didn't get enough sleep. That's why I still feel tired. And then I researched it a little bit, right? And what I realized is the moment you wake up to the moment you're like, you're groggy, you wake, you're asleep. Then you start to wake up and you're a bit groggy. Then you're awake. There's a term for it called, I believe it's hypnogogic. I believe that's the term for it. And it's that place between hypnosis and being awake. Or that place, bet- and hypnosis basically means sleep. In its Latin terms, although it's very different than sleep. Um, but so, so you go from that state of being awake, excuse me, of being asleep to wide awake. And we often wake up and we're groggy. And I need that information. I thought, oh, that means I'm tired. No, no, it's my body transitioning from, from like first gear to second gear. There's a little space in between. It's not absolutely natural. You wake up, you feel a bit groggy, then you start moving a little bit in a few minutes. You know, you're ready to take on the day. So to listen to your body, but not necessarily always your mind. Because sometimes your mind, our minds will play games on us. But oftentimes when we listen to our natural body and what's going on for us, it will give us all the biofeedback that we need. Biofeedback meaning going more sleep, less sleep, more food, less food, more light, less light, etc. So to answer your question, there is no one size fits all. You've got to really be in tune with your body. Yes. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. And this was exact the same exact answer which uh, I got when I asked my psychologist because like when I in, back in 2019, I was very desperate and I was I also wanted that magic number of some X number. And every time I fell short of X, then uh, desperation started fading up and that that is exactly what uh, my psychologist also told me which is like every study that is done is hardly done on a max even if you take a sample size of 10,000 
we uh, even in a country like india we are 130 crore people so you can't extrapolate that 10000 onto 130 crore and say that this is this is going to be valid and basically we are not sheep or cattle where everybody is the same in fact our human brain itself has more than 80 billion neurons and the number of possibilities the permutations and combinations with that can cre- be created are really uncountable at all so so like somebody else's sleep shouldn't be somebody else's number shouldn't be the number which you should strive for yeah and i totally get it it can be used as a signpost but yeah you should be learning about how to give your body the necessary rest or they are like you talk, talked about the transitioning from the gear 1 to gear 2 so give your body the time to make the transition and then you will see it yeah and if 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 it is not making the transition from gear 1 to gear 2 and it's asking you to go to sleep or asking you for rest okay give your body the rest so our body has that innate intelligence so in fact there's a beautiful book called as uh, the body keeps the score i think uh, yeah, you I might have that known body, that i'm about halfway through it takes a while to get through that body but that book cuz it's so dense in information yes. but yeah back back basil ba- ba- basil Car- yeah middle initial last yeah. name yeah yeah no, got it yeah the the author's name is also a bit complicated but yeah what what he talks about is this when our body is in a state of uh, like uh, you were talking about the anxiety part right so body keeps the score body wants to see basically our brain has just 2% of the volume in the complete body and it needs more than 20% of the energy resources so what it does is it does something called as energy optimization and even though it knows that you are going through this phase of uh struggle or this anxious thought it still goes in that phase because it's a familiar path to that brain and it can conserve energy so that is why it keeps going in this path but you need to understand that all all of this is just a label and when your body knows that uh there is no danger as such then the body can do uh, the rest and digest thing and it can heal itself yeah 